Welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna podcast. Hope you're enjoying the show. I um, hope you're enjoying the preview. I really do enjoy putting these previews together. So um, I hope you guys uh, enjoy them. Please do leave a like on the video if you haven't done so already. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you're listening on audio, well, then please do leave us a review as well. That really, really um, does help. Okay. Um, let's talk Jorginho because I think it is imperative that Jorginho starts this game. And I know that there are Jorginho skeptics out there. I know there are Arsenal fans that will say no, 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 no. But I think he's proven in recent times when deployed in the bigger games that he is useful, that he brings a calmness, a control, and that him and Declan Rice is a combination. Because although on paper, if you put Jorginho as the six, it's almost like you're saying, well, Rice is playing as an eight. I actually think he's playing a kind of hybrid role where he tucks in and he supports Jorginho when necessary being well aware of maybe the guy's mobility issues in terms of the fact that he's not the quickest across the ground, not the most physical, et cetera, et cetera. But also he does have that bit of freedom and that bit of license in certain scenarios to get forward and support the attack. So let me explain using my tactics board, which I love, obviously, uh, why I think it's imperative that Jorginho plays. One of the features of the FA Cup game that we played recently was the fact that Liverpool were really, really aggressive in their press and we were able to play through it because we had the right personnel uh, to do that. And in the first half in particular, we caused them all sorts of problems. How we weren't winning that game by two, three goals at half time, I'll never know. We just weren't clinical enough. We didn't take our chances when they came. We hit the woodwork, etc., etc. Something Darwin Nunez, by the way, knows all about. But if you look at the way Liverpool like to press, right? So you know that Nunez... Um, is going to is is going to to want to press. You know that the the three forwards are going to do that, and with the four defenders and of course the goalkeeper um, being involved as well, which is why we signed David Raya, isn't it? Really to be uh, helpful in that situation, in that scenario, his ability to play the ball into midfield, all that stuff is really really important to us. You have the man advantage, four versus three, and of course the goalkeeper makes it five versus three. So there's there's confidence that even though it's high risk football that you can play your way through Liverpool's press. What happens is once you play your way through the first line of press is you face a second line of press, um, which is going to be really, really aggressive. We've seen it before with Liverpool. And you know that Jorginho, who's going to play in the six if Arteta goes with my lineup, is going to be the one that comes under pressure. Now, is he the most press-resistant player? Well, not physically, because you, you don't fancy him to hold someone off if they're kind of physically challenging him for the ball. But I tell you what he is. He's calm, he's composed, he's got great vision, and he's got plenty of experience. And I think one of the reasons we were so successful in terms of breaking through Liverpool's midfield line and getting onto their back line when we played them in the FA Cup was because of him, because of the way he progressed the ball. Now, you want Zinchenko to be doing a bit of this as well. But I also recognise that against a side like Liverpool, it's probably really, really important, actually, that you um, you keep Zinchenko in the right starting position because in the event of a turnover, you need him to be in the best possible situation when it comes to trying to defend. Against weaker sides, you can take greater risks with him and you can push him further up the pitch and more in field. But I think a lot of the emphasis on this is going to be on Jorginho. Now, when Jorginho receives the ball here, I think it's really important that Declan Rice is switched on. I talk about him playing maybe, if you go with this, this team, a hybrid role in terms of wanting to be an eight and wanting to get involved in the attack, but also needing to be alert. He needs to recognise when the ball's about to be fed into Jorginho and be at least in the vicinity and on hand to support should the turnover happen. We know his uh, ability to recover the ball is brilliant. His physicality is great as well. And he just offers you that extra layer of protection. But Jorginho in this position has the ability to pick up the ball and under pressure, turn, whatever, and play balls through the lines into the likes of Odegaard, into the likes of um, Martinelli, into spaces for maybe Declan Rice uh, to run onto as well. And that was a big part of why Arsenal were able to break through the lines. Now, you could argue that if Liverpool kind of fall into this trap, it's a little bit naive, but we're going to do the same thing the other way. We're going to press them aggressively the other way. And what I'd actually like to see from Arsenal is a bit more of a measured approach when we're pressing, because against Manchester City, when we played them in the league, I thought we did a really good job of saying, you know what, 
sometimes we're going to press you, but at other times we're going to let you have it there. And we're just going to make sure that we're in shape and make sure that we don't leave any spaces and we're not vulnerable as a result of that. So I think Jorginho is going to be key here. If, if Thomas Partey was available, then obviously Thomas Partey would play in that sixth role. And then Rice's responsibility in terms of defensively in this setup when he's playing as, and in quote marks, an eight, would be less because you'd have greater faith in Thomas Partey and his press resistance because of his physical attributes as well as his technical ones. Jorginho has all the technical ability in the world, maybe not the physical stuff that allows him to protect the ball in the same way. But there's no doubt about it. This is going to be the key to breaching that Liverpool midfield and getting onto the back line. And when we did that in the FA Cup, we had lots of joy because all of a sudden it was your three forwards onto their back four. It was Martin Odegaard joining in, making it four on four. It, it was it was so good. It was so good. And when we had Kai Havertz up front as well, in the scenario, in the situation that you couldn't play through the lines like this, then we could go that little bit more direct. Martinelli and Saka would get on their bike really early, get close to him, knowing that the knockdown was going to come and we were effective that way as well. That's why I'd be tempted, not just because of Jesus' fitness issues, but that's why I'd be tempted to play Havertz here as well. Again, I know people would disagree with that, but I think that's an option too. So that's why I think Jorginho playing is imperative. And that's why I think he can make the difference. He's got the experience in big game situations. Um, and I can make the case for Jorginho to start here as an individual. But perhaps the stronger case is the one that says you can't afford to play Emile Smith-Rowe or Havertz in a midfield against Liverpool. I think that's probably the stronger case because to have a Mill Smith Rowe and Odegaard, for example, against Liverpool's midfield would unbalance us. And I think defensively makes us too fragile, not from a want of a lack of trying from those two guys or anything like that. It just, it just to me is a massive, massive gamble and a massive, massive risk to take. 